One question has surrounded a prominent triad family for almost 100 years. Who killed Smith Reynolds? Yeah, people have searched for answers for decades with no luck. A new exhibit at the family's museum sheds new light on the mystery. WFMY News 2's Eric Chilton learned how it could finally help settle the decades old controversy. The Reynolds family was one of the wealthiest in the entire country in the 1930s. Their tobacco empire ran the state of North Carolina. The heir to this empire was Smith Reynolds, a young man with an eye for ladies and a love of flying. He was the youngest licensed pilot in the country. We have his license signed by Orville Wright when he was 16. So he followed his dreams, and one of those dreams turned out to be Libby Holman as well. She started kind of as a chorus member, but pretty quickly, within I'd say four years, she was uh, getting pretty major roles, and by 1930, she really was a, a, a big star. I mean, she's called the leading light of Broadway. Libby and Smith fell in love quickly. In fact, only five days after Smith divorced his first wife, he married Libby. A beginning highlighted in controversy and an ending highlighted by murder. July 5, 1932, the Winston-Salem heir to the tobacco fortune was shot in the head and would later die at the hospital. Smith Reynolds was only 20 years old. There was a big party that night at the prominent Reynolds mansion. Following that, the only people in that end of the mansion were Smith's wife, Libby, and his best friend and advisor, Ab Walker. A national media circus surrounded this case, especially since the stories between Libby and Ab for that night were not adding up. Smith came downstairs and said, according to Ab, um, our trip is off around the world. I'm gonna go out and end it all tonight. And then Ab said that Smith threw his wallet to him and said, you can have that. Libby was the most puzzling and frustrating witness of all because she claimed complete amnesia for 48 hours. Phil Archer with Renolda House led us into the actual room in which the shooting took place. It had been sealed for decades. Libby said she was lying in the bed, um, suddenly awoke to hear her name, and the smith was standing beside the bed, leaning over her with the gun to his head. The problem with it is the trajectory of the bullet, again passing from his hairline above his right temple, passing out below and behind his left ear, but leaving the room through that window. Up here somewhere? Seven feet above the ground, so just above where your hand was. The sheriff was in this space, saw the blood, saw the, the location of the hole, um, knew more about, about forensics, really, than the coroner did. Never believed that, uh, never believed it was suicide, and never believed that Smith shot himself while standing up. And then there's the testimony of the night watchman, William Fulcher. He heard a faint pop. He went around to the window of Smith and Libby's bedroom and stood for three minutes listening. Didn't hear any cries, didn't hear any screams. The case continued to garner headlines as testimonies dragged on. There then was a, a finding of death by party or parties unknown, which means it's not suicide. Somebody else held the gun. And then uh, the state impaneled a, a grand jury, and they found first-degree murder charges were warranted against both his wife, Libby, and his best friend, Ab. So this would have carried the death penalty by electric chair in 1932. Then, during testimony, it came out Libby was pregnant. The very idea that a Reynolds heir would be born in prison was too much. All it took was a call from the Reynolds family to the state solicitor. I mean, that is a demonstration of power, if I've ever seen it, soft power, um, to be able to say that we would be content for a murder case to simply be dropped, and it was. Libby would go on to act in movies successfully and have her child, Christopher Reynolds. He died in a mountain climbing accident at the age of 17. Libby committed suicide while in her 60s. Ab had to move to Texas to escape the rumors but was quoted on the stand to say, some details of what happened that night, I will take to my grave. And he did. We will never know what actually happened that night, but this exhibit allows us a peek into the facts and in some way gives some peace to a family so important to the triad and the state of North Carolina. In Winston-Salem, Eric Chilton, WFMY News 2. Mm, the exhibit will remain at the Renolda Museum through the end of the year.